So I think Jason, you've been working with the first line of innovation uh, for a while, and also you guys work with a lot of fascinating technology as well. So what do you see is the breakthrough make you still confident that cell therapy or gene therapy is not just a, a fiction or scientific dream? And for Sean, I think I have a follow-up question for you is, you know, with the new wave of technology, what do you see the change for the investment calculus? Thank you all for having me um, as the non-scientist on the panel. I think it'll be easy for me to keep it um, uh, keep it in the room. But um, I think the, the reasons for optimism uh, for cell therapy in particular is the incredible clinical impact that the patients have that receive it. Um, so if it was modestly better, incrementally better, almost as good as some of the existing uh, biologics and small molecule interventions that we have, there's a chance that potentially the modality wasn't necessary. But what we're seeing is revolutionary outcomes for patients. We're seeing patients who are late stage, you know, pick your hematological cancer, maybe multiple myeloma patients, that go from weeks to live to a complete response, having no signs of cancer in their body. And this is incredible outcomes that we've never seen before, sort of clinically uh, and scientifically. So I think the, the good news is that the safety and efficacy argument for cell therapy has been proven in my perspective, and I'd love to hear my, my fellow panelists' point of view, but we've proven that. Uh, what we haven't yet proven is the economic model that works uh, to deliver these products to patients at scale. And that's really where Ori Biotech comes in. Our company has innovated a advanced manufacturing technology uh, as recognized by the FDA, which can produce these products at scale for many, many uh, folds, higher numbers of patients at a dramatically lower cost. And then these types of innovations are going to be required to treat the next wave of patients, maybe in solid tumors or in autoimmune disease or other types of indications that have very large uh, patient populations. The California Institute of Regenerative Medicine, CIRM, is uh, a unique agency. We're a California grant funding agency of $8.5 billion. We're founded and funded by the people of California. They voted for us. And our main mission is to basically accelerate the development of cell and gene therapies from really early stage research to the final trials that you need to do before you can file with the FDA for approval. And so Jason mentioned some of the transformative therapies, and there's quite a few examples. So what really jump-started this whole field was a lot of work that Kristen uh, pioneered, which is CAR-T therapies, where you can take your immune cells out of your own body, supercharge them, put them back in the body to fight cancer. And that has really allowed us to take that sort of technology and apply it to all kinds of other areas. And so a lot of what CIRM funds is an area called regenerative medicine. And so here we take um, stem cells in the lab and turn them into different types of tissue cells. So these could be brain cells, nerve cells. They could be islet cells for type one diabetes, it could be heart cells for, for cardiac heart disease. And once you take and make those in the lab, what really needed to be demonstrated was, can you put those in patients and can they regenerate dying organs or dying tissues? And in the last few years, we've seen the early evidence of this in clinical trials. So for example, there's been work done in Parkinson's disease where you can inject these stem cell-derived neural cells into patients and reduce their symptoms. Uh, and similarly, you can take cells, turn them into islet cells, transplant them into patients that have type 1 diabetes and take them off of insulin. Some of the work that CERM has funded is a company called Neurona Therapeutics, where they're able to take stem cells, turn them into neuron cells, and inject them in patients who have drug-resistant epilepsy. And in very early clinical trials, these patients have seen 90% reduction in seizure rate. And so if that holds out in later stage clinical trials, they have a phase three trial with the FDA that they have planned and plan to do that. This could be transformative, as Jason mentioned, for these patients who either first didn't have any therapies that they can use, and now they have a therapy that dramatically reduces seizures and they can go on living their lives. And so that brings up the question of you have these therapies that are being developed, they're complicated manufacturing processes, that are very complex products, and you're going after diseases that are fairly prevalent and global. How do you scale? And that's a lot of what Jason was talking about is that these challenges are gonna be faced here, but there's no option but to solve them because if they work, patients are gonna want them, the healthcare system is gonna want it, and it's on us um, as funders, it's on the developers, it's on the investors to come together and find ways to solve these problems.